Autobotulinum toxin, or Botox, is a pharmaceutically derived product. The original toxin was from basically botulism, but it is now pharmaceutically developed and produced. It's been used in FDA approved now for 10 indications. Two of them are cosmetic and the eight uh, others are medical in nature, one of which is chronic migraine. The molecule is absorbed by the nerve, so by the peripheral nerve receptor. And at the periphery, this medication or toxin is introduced into the nerve. What it does in the nerve is interferes with the nerve's ability to signal. In a motor neuron, it interferes with the nerve's ability to cause the muscle to move. In a sensory neuron, it interferes with the nerve's ability to communicate pain. So the FDA-approved delivery protocol for Botox is 155 units spread over 31 injections in different areas of the head and neck and shoulder regions. The guidelines for the delivery of Botox are evolving in a way to suit to the needs of patients. Like any other substance or medication, we learn when we're using them that, that perhaps the original protocol was not the best. So the new delivery protocols are involving a, a program known as Go For The Pain, where we're going to tailor the number of injections and we're going to tailor the amount of medication that's delivered. So instead of 155 units, some patients may be 100. Some patients, will, we will advance all the way up to 200. Instead of 31 sites, there may be 15 or 40 or 44. So we are tailoring the number of injections and the amount of medication to suit the needs of patients. We find much better results. There are probably three main things that physicians need to know about Botox and migraine management. Number one, it's an extraordinarily effective medication for patients who have failed other options. Number two, this is something that is a part of a migraine treatment strategy. Patients still need acute care for attacks. Patients still need natural lifestyle steps to follow. And they also need other uh, management of their comorbidities, for example, like depression or anxiety. And third, we really need to pay attention to documentation. We need to document that these patients merit it, that they have the right number of headaches, the right degree of headache, that they failed the number of medications they need to fail, and that they've responded over time. Because if we certainly supply the right information to the insurers, we will guarantee that we can continue to have access to this treatment strategy that really does benefit a number of people we care for.